CT scans, known as CAT scans, these this isn't a scan you get for your cat, just like a, pe uh, 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 a pet scan isn't a scan used for your pet. It is used uh, uh, to visualize uh, the inside of you um, in a non-invasive, non-surgical procedure so that you can see your uh, uh, any sort of material that might be lodged inside of you that shouldn't be. How does it work? And how does it apply to medicine? Well, CT scans use x-rays to image the structures of the body. Uh, they were the first to non-invasive radiological method uh, allowing for this type of imaging. And they work with the x-rays. Uh, x-rays are able to pass through objects such as soft tissue, less dense objects, and they don't pass through other objects of the body, such as bones. Uh, this is very similar to light because it is light. Uh, it's very similar to visible light in that if you have a thin piece of cloth you hold up, visible light can shine through it. But if you have a wooden brick, it won't. So a CT scan will take a background plate that will absorb any uh, x-rays that get through the body. That way, when x-rays are pushed through the body, any x-rays that aren't able to get through will leave a shadow on the wall. In a CT scan, it rotates the imaging around your body in a circular motion. That way, you have a bunch of 2D images that, when put together, can create a large 3D scan of the inside of your body which is a very big improvement over a plain x-ray machine, which can only produce one 2D image from one angle. The physics principles. Um, x-rays are a form of light. Their wavelength is 0.01 nanometers to 10 nanometers. For reference, visible light is 400 to 700 nanometers. Uh, so much, much smaller, far outside of the visible light spectrum. Uh, we discovered how to produce them by accelerating electrons through a potential difference, such as a voltage drop, and directing them at a target material, such as uh, uh, tungsten. And as the electrons hit the target material, x-rays are released. And then they're able to go through the object and form um, an image. Uh, the equation for the intensity of x-rays is seen in, on the screen as I, which is the um, intensity behind the object, equals I to the O. How, how do you say that? I initial, which is the initial uh, uh, intensity of the uh, x-ray projector. Uh, to e to the power of negative ax, x being the length of the x-ray path through the object, and a is the attenuation coefficient of the material, which is basically how dense the material, how easily a uh, x-ray can go through it. Okay, so why are CT scans used in medicine? As Ben discussed, it's used to make a visual image of bones, blood vessels, and soft tissue. And as such, it's more detailed than having just an x-ray because a normal x-ray will only show you the hard tissue like bones, but not any of the soft tissue as well. Um, so a CT scan, you will go and lay down on the table and then the you will go through the, like, the tube donut shape thing and it will take a series of x-rays going all around your body to get a kind of 3D sort of image. So this is really useful for people with internal injuries. For example, if you get in a car accident or you have some sort of other internal trauma, um, you can have a non-invasive procedure that will kind of help the doctor to see what is happening inside you. And then it can also be used to um, see if you have like a muscle or bone disorder or if there's a blood clot or infection, it can be seen with the CT scan as well, or if you have internal bleeding. And then it can also be used as like a preemptive 
measure to plan for surgery so that they can kind of see where the thing is that they're going to remove. Um, or for radiation treatment, if you have a tumor or something, and they can see how it's growing. And then if the treatment is causing the tumor to um, shrink as well. And then just a couple other things that they're used for to detect liver masses, um, nodules in the, youngs, in the lungs, <laughs> and other problems as well. So you can see they're kind of have really far reaching uh, uses in medicine. Um, the main uh, risks that we're talking about when we discuss CT scans is the exposure to radiation, um, which is pretty brief. Uh, a CT scan procedure will typically take um, only a few minutes for the actual procedure. Um, and the actual dose of radiation depends on many factors. For example, how big of an area of your body is being examined. And then also uh, there's different types of CT scans as well. Um, so that uh, will cause the dose of radiation to vary. Um, there's also a potential for harm to unborn babies. And so if um, people will discuss with their doctor, um, if they're pregnant, then they might, the doctor might advise against having a CT scan because there's a small chance of risk with that as well. Um, but the main thing is radiation. And the, um, the problem that that causes is that it increases the risk of cancer, but how much it does so depends on, um, like we talked about before, the area of the body that was subjected to the radiation and then the person's age and gender as well. Um, they also will sometimes have you take um, this like liquid beforehand um, when you get a CT scan that's called a contrast material and that helps to sharpen the image and kind of point out um, certain things that the doctor might be looking for and sometimes people will have an allergic reaction to that but that's pretty rare. And then the other risk that might happen is that if they find something that ne they weren't necessarily looking for, um, people will sometimes have unnecessary surgery to get that out, um, even if that wasn't what they were planning on. So that can lead to a more invasive uh, surgery as well. Um, so this table kind of shows um, the risks associated with different types of CT scans of the radiation. The units are in millis, uh, sieverts, which are a uh, one thousandth of a gray. Um, however, because of the variation in the procedure, the actual radiation dose could be several times larger or smaller than those estimates. So um, just as kind of a comparison, the effective dose for a CT scan is usually about one to 10 um, millisieverts, but um, if you compare that to like people who survived the radiation from like an atomic bomb in Japan, they got about five to 20, so quite a bit higher. Um, and then the increase in possibility of fatal cancer due to a dose from a CT scan is only about one in 2000. So if you compare that to the chances of getting cancer normally, which is about one in five, um, the, the dose that you would get from a CT scan doesn't really increase that much at all. Um, and then if you weigh that against the risks of not getting a CT scan, if you have some internal bleeding or something like that, then um, the benefits really outweigh the risk. Okay, some history with the CT scan. Uh, doctors like to say one year in real life is like 10 years in CT time, meaning that the progression of CT scans are quite slower than a lot of other technology because of how complex they are. So in the early 1900s, um, Alessandro Vallabona invented the tomography, which used radiographic film to see a single slice of the body. Um, and then in 1967, Sir Godfrey Hounsfield invented the first CT scanner using X-ray technology. So this was a big deal because it was a new use of this technology. Um, and fun fact, many think that the Beatles, their, their record sales in the 1960s helped fund the first CT scans development, which is really interesting. Um, the first CT brain scan was performed in 1971. And then in 1973 is when the U.S. first installed our first CT scanners. And by 1980, over 3 million CT scans have been performed. And by 2005, the number was over 68 million each year. So we've gotten to use this quite frequently because of how effective it is. And then in 2008, a new generation of CT scans were developed that could take images of beating hearts and coronary arteries instead of just bones in your brain. 
Um, and then in 2010, the FDA launched their initiative to reduce unnecessary radiation exposure, which brought attention to the reducing radiation, as Maya said, could be um, a big risk. <laughs> um, and then actually over 20 years ago, a CT scan would take about 30 minutes or more to get done, but now it takes less than three seconds to get all the images and information that you need. And they say that the new image reconstru reconstruction techniques have developed to reduce the radiation by 70 to 80% over the past four years. So the ra radiation coming from CT scans have actually decreased recently. Um, a William Eversman, he's an MD chairman of radiology at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona. He said, in our lifetimes, I don't think that we will reach the technology of Star Trek, where you can wave a wand over someone and instantly diagnose them. But step by step, we're getting there. So it's taking a lot of time to get to where CT scans could be, but eventually they think that we may get there. Um, <laughs> so CT scans improve diagnoses. They limit unneeded med medical procedures and enhance treatment. They can see things that doctors would Un otherwise be unable to diagnose and see. Um, they are able to rule out heart disease and rule out heart disease and tumors, blood clots, fractures, and internal bleeding. Um, they Before CT scans, if doctors wanted to look for a brain tumor, what they had to do was inject air into the spinal column. They then roasted the patient to allow the air to bubble up into the area around the brain to increase the contact in the standard x-ray images. So this image here is done in the spinal column. As you can see an image on the right, there's that air gap that was filled, the bubble. Um, and doctors say that before the CT scans for this air um, technique, patients routinely vomited. It was like torture. But now with CT scans, the imaging is quick and completely painless. So CT scans have proven to imp improve the lives of millions of patients because of the quick and easy diagnoses that we were able to see. Um, Jao Lima, the director of cardiovascular imaging for John Hopkins, said speed and diagnostic accuracy are the bottom line. Um, CT scans are able to do this, and it is expected that there are many new improvements coming in the next couple of years. Um, better care has been made possible due to these scanners. Quicker diagnoses, more accurate treatment, and safer procedures are a result of the CT scans. Um, these machines are constantly evolving and turning into more efficient and useful medical technology. And when we look back at how far CT scanners have come, the sky's the limit for what they can be in the future. <laughs>